you uh you had some deployments you were in for about nine years ish came in around uh mid 2000s a little over uh came in july of 2006 a little bit later than i than i wanted to um my first wife didn't want anything to do with the military so stayed back joined the family business um so i joined up july of 06 uh was in almost 10 years before i got hurt so was actually getting ready. Uh, we, we was talking to retention. Uh, was actually getting ready to reenlist. Um, fixing to go to back to Fort Lee for ANOC and get that NCO school out of the way. And then we were going to go teach at the Generator Mechanic School on Fort Lee. And then it was going to be off to Fort Benning after that. Uh, we we probably had the next I think it was like the next six to seven years mapped out in my career before it was going to be time to reenlist again. Uh, I was going to be a lifer, man. If I if I hadn't got hurt, I'd still be in right now. Well, what, 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 what uh, did you, what compelled you to, to join the military? Or was it, did you have a family history in uh, military? Just for me, it was kind of a fluke, uh, but. Um, well, my, uh, my grand, my grandpa on my mom's side raised me uh, through my elementary school years. Um, he was retired Navy. Uh, my grandpa on my dad's side was in the army. Um, while I was in Fort Riley, uh, right before I got hurt, um, I joined up with that ancestry.com thing and started doing a lot of genealogy research. It took me a couple of years. Um, but come to find out that my, my family's been in every conflict that America's ever been in. So it, it's, it's in the blood for us, man. Uh, the Conwells have a very, very long history of defending this amazing country of ours. So you had it in your head you were going to join the military. Was that? Oh yeah, I gave up. I gave up a four-year basketball scholarship to David Lipscomb University. <laughs> join the army. <laughs> wow. Well, then you kind of had uh, this path that you given up. Was there like a decision point there? Uh, you you had a choice. You could have, in fact, taken the scholarship and going officer route before or after the fact I could have um but you know my my grand both my grandfathers were very wise um you know they were they both of them always told me it was best to go in and get some grunt time in before you even thought about being an officer um of course I guess they still you know they had to I'm not going to say every officer has issues if they come in as a second lieutenant but I understood what they're talking about you know it's mm-hmm. you want to get that that you want to pay your dues before you actually take over a platoon, <laughs> you know. And, and some of those second, some That's of those what every enlisted member says about officers, right? right? <laughs> Not until you walk a mile in my shoes, of course. Right. I don't know a whole lot of officers that would say the same. Yeah, just go officer. Nah, <laughs> no, it's fine. Well, okay, so uh, join the military. Um, man, this you, when was the the injury? When was the incident? And this this wasn't on deployment, was it? This was in garrison. No. Yes, uh, January seventh, two thousand fourteen, on Fort Riley. Um, there's a road called Trooper Drive. I was going to get my guy some lunch. Um, I hit black ice and ran off a 150 foot ravine, um, crushed both my legs. Uh, I lost the left one above the knee. Uh, the right one is a limb salvage, uh, between the kneecap and the ankle. There's 30 screws, four plates and a 10 inch rod. Um, I cannot feel my right foot. Uh, so I can't use my toes to balance. Uh, so it's like having a BK uh, below the knee amputation on the right side, uh, because I, I just, I can't use the right foot for nothing. Uh, it's like Mr. Deeds, man. You can stab me with a fire poker and I'm not going to feel it. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's that, like I said, that was right at my 10 year mark, man. Uh, got hit, uh, was better backed out to KU Med, um, because Fort Riley's in Kansas, of course. Um, that's where they took my leg. Uh, the doctors told me that I probably would never walk again. Um, if I did, that it was going to have to be assisted with either crutches or a walker or some type of assisted device. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the hospital for an entire year. Um, finally come out, uh, you know, 
was medically retired October 27th of 2015 out of Fort Sam Houston down there at CFI and uh, finally came home. Uh, it went through some, went through some pretty dark times, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our PTSD from deployments and stuff like that. And then, you know, the depression of not being able to walk and, and wonder what, you know, how I'm going to interact with my kids and my family and my friends. Um, it was, it, it's, it's life changing. You know what I'm saying? And, and on top of it, I, I went through a lot of it on my own because a lot of people didn't come around because they didn't know how to act. You know, they didn't want to disrespect me in any kind of way. But then again, they were a little nervous on what to do, what not to do type of things. So uh, kind of went through a dark hole for a while. 